Hello and welcome to this short tiny house tour. This is my 26 foot tiny house that I built. It's on a tumbleweed tiny house frame. Uh, more specifically, it's a tumbleweed tiny house barn raisers package. And what that means is it's the trailer, the insulated floor, uh, walls and sheathing, and roof sheathing. That's all they provided. Everything else we did. Uh, it's 26 feet long. It's about eight and a half feet wide and 13 and a half feet tall. Uh, what that means is it's fully DOT legal. You do not have to have a permit uh, to take it pretty much anywhere. It has two 7,000 pound axles and load rated tires and it can be towed with a one ton truck. Uh, it weighs about 13 and a half thousand pounds. Uh, I've tried to do uh, all premium materials here and so you won't find things like vinyl siding or vinyl windows or anything like that. Uh, the exterior is LP smart side in a, a vertical board and batten. This is a wood system with paint uh, and then this beautiful accent wall here is a uh, hardwood called Kumaru. Uh, it is on a rain screen type uh, clip system and uh, the windows are all Marvin integrity. Uh, some are alumin and aluminum. Uh, the, the clear story windows across the top are an awning function and all the rest are a double hung. Uh, they're very nice windows, uh, double pane with a smart sun type glass. Um, I always pictured that this would probably have a small uh, patio out here, so I put an outlet out here and uh, these are just temporary stairs. Uh, I imagine you'd have wherever it goes, uh, you know, a small patio and uh, maybe an awning. I've put provisions in the wall framing, uh, kind of between the, the window and the door so that you could bolt on a structural awning uh, and be able to get right into the framing. Uh, this unit has no storage tanks. Uh, it's not an RV, it is a, a tiny home on wheels. Uh, so to, to hook it up, you would need 50 amp electric service, fresh water, uh, vent or uh, wastewater, and you would also need LP gas for the water heater and for the stove. Um, it has four leveling jacks. Uh, if you want to permanently install it, you would probably want to uh, raise the frame up on blocking and have it hurricane strapped down. Let me show you what we did for the mechanical fi uh, hookups and the plumbing. All of the mechanical hookups for this tiny house are located here, kind of on the back left in this area. We've got a 50 amp shore power electric, we've got a 3 quarter inch fresh water supply, and we've got the LP gas supply and shut off all right here. Uh, a little further back is the 3 inch PVC plumbing outlet. You could either permanently plumb that or you could put a RV style cam lock coupling if you were going into a, more of a temporary hookup. I put all the mechanical right here because if there's one thing I hate, it's a tiny house tail. What's a tiny house tail? That's when you've got mechanical hookups barfing out the side of your beautiful tiny home. Who wants to see a power cable coming out the side here and water and all that mess? It's all underneath. So if you get this somewhere semi-permanent, uh, you could put skirting on it, everything's going to be hidden. The other thing we have under here is a uh, convenience outlet uh, for you to plug in uh, really anything you want. But what I was thinking was if you have a heated water hose, you plug it in right there. Uh, the other thing that's kind of semi-permanently plugged in there is the heated uh, plumbing drain piping. I've got a heat trace uh, heater on that PVC pipe. There's one trap underneath the unit, which is the shower trap, and so that always has water in it, so we need to prevent that from freezing. That piping is insulated uh, with a uh, uh, self-stick uh, foam insulation. Then there's rock wool on top of that, and then we finish it with these sheet metal boxes, and the sheet metal boxes protect all the PVC plumbing underneath and keep that heat in where it needs to be. Uh, a couple other features on this unit are uh, rock wool insulation in the walls, rock wool insulation on the, in the, the ceiling, two inches of poly iso foam on top of the roof structure, uh, and a black standing seam 
architectural metal roof system. Thanks for coming inside. My name is Carl and I built this tiny house. I'd like to give you a deep dive uh, if just if you're interested or if you're interested in buying this. Uh, I'm going to go into some pretty mundane details here, so uh, <laughs> hope, you, hope you're in for the mundane details. Uh, boy, there's a lot of details in this unit. Uh, I tried to make this uh, Scandi style, let's call it. So Scandinavian style, uh, earthy colors, pretty simple colors, not a lot going on there. Um, so let's just dive into it. Let me talk about the materials I used, uh, why I made the design choices that I did, uh, and some of the things that, that I really think are cool and that I'm most proud of on this. Uh, so, so this is the living room. So uh, the front door is over here and you come in. And this is one thing I really like about this layout is that you've got a proper living room. So a lot of tiny houses that you see, they put the door over here or on the end, which means that it's not a living room anymore. It's kind of a, it's a walking space. So you don't have that dedicated space for just relaxing. And that's what this is. So we've got uh, the couch from Ikea and a, an ottoman from Ikea, uh, you know, Ikea, Scandinavian. Um, and the reason I picked this couch in particular was that it just made our, our cutoff here for, for length. And I had to meet that because this ladder moves and provides access to the, to the upstairs loft. So the thing you notice first when you come into this tiny house is the walls. Uh, the walls are Baltic birch panel. So all of these walls are quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and that is applied over a quarter inch uh, Lua, it's a little under a quarter inch Luan plywood and then that that's what closes the walls up so our, our interior walls instead of being drywall or um, shiplap pine or something like that uh, is the the uh, the Luan underlay, underlayment and then the gaps between are painted black and then the Luan plywood goes on. And so what that also allows us to do here is to do something that has no trim. There's no trim at the top of the wall. There's no trim at the bottom of the wall. All we have is this, uh, I call it a negative space. So uh, this is actually a gap in between the panels. And we've painted the, the Luan behind it black. So it kind of gives a cool, you know, it gives it some texture, some depth. Um, so the panels are roughly three feet by three feet. And uh, fun fact, there is only one panel in the entire house that doesn't have some sort of cut in it. And what I, when I mean cut, I mean this panel is cut to go around the window. This panel has a cut to go around these. Uh, and every single panel cut, fit by hand, uh, two coats of uh, Bona Traffic Natural, um, uh, heavy duty floor, it's a floor finish. It's an aqueous uh, water uh, water-based floor finish uh, so there's a lot of Baltic birch in here and uh, with all the stuff going on in that area of the world right now you really couldn't create this because Baltic birch plywood has disappeared especially Baltic birch plywood that that looks this good uh, most of this plywood is pretty clear there's you know a few a few things but uh, also there is uh, there are no uh, no defects in the plywood. You will not find um, you will not find a, a defect or repair in this. So uh, the ladder is also birch. It's a solid birch. Uh, the trim around the windows is solid birch, and the doors as well. Um, so there is a little bit of pine in here. So this is is a pine beam that's been painted. The ceiling is a pine, uh, which you'd call a porch floor type material, tongue and groove. Um, and, uh, but, but that's really it. Other than that, it, it's, it's all birch, baby. So back to our living room, we've got a, a pretty decent ceiling height here. I'm six foot three. And so this, I, you know, I don't feel uncomfortable here at all. There's a lot of room. You've got a full 
I guess you'd call it a full-size couch. Maybe some might call it a love seat, but you can put three people on here pretty comfortably. Uh, <clears throat> along with uh, everything that's built in, I have made a couple pieces of furniture. So for this table, uh, I've made this kind of multifunction piece of furniture. So this is a uh, inch and a quarter steel um, with a Baltic perch top. I guess you'd call this a C table. And the fun thing with this is you can use it as a stool at the table uh, and this table this table folds down uh, but you can also use it as a couch table like that I've got the second one over there in the corner but uh, of course you could put it something like that and then you keep your drink and your remote on there so uh, another thing I'm that uh, I really like about this house is uh, the lighting. A lot of times in a tiny house you have this type of layout where you've got a secondary loft and a primary loft and there's hardly any light underneath but as you can see you know there's there's good lighting in here. I have four uh, very small they're about this big LED puck fixtures that are installed in the ceiling and you cannot see any of the wires. They are installed into the thickness of the porch floor. And you would <laughs> never guess how we got the wires there. But uh, in between the tongue and the groove of that porch floor, we fished all the wires to do these four lights. And then they go back and behind the TV is a junction box and we have 12 volt power supply there for the LED. Those are controlled on this light switch. Uh, then we've got another light switch for the, the light for the, I guess you call it the porch outside. And then we've got another light here for the ceiling fixture. So these lights here are about a 3500 Kelvin color temperature. So they're, they're a, what you call a bright white. And so those are good, those are good for, you know, general, general area lighting, task lighting. Uh, but the lamps that we have in the, the, the fixture on the ceiling, which is more of a modern chandelier, those are much warmer. That's more like an 1800 or maybe a 2000 Kelvin. So, you know, at night, if you're watching a movie or something, you turn these lights off and you've got the real nice warm uh, light from the chandelier. So, uh, all the windows in the entire thing are, uh, are Marvin Integrity window, very high quality window. Um, we have all these uh, double hungs. Um, they all have a um, uh, cellular blind, a gray cellular blind, uh, and so those do a pretty good job of, of knocking down the light from the outside. If you, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you need to blackout curtains for sleeping, they might not be quite blackout, but uh, you can get it pretty dark in here for, you know, for sleeping uh, and for privacy. Um, comes with this uh, 40 three-inch Samsung TV. It's fairly thin. It is a 4K, smart features, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just a perfect size for how close we are to the living room here. Uh, my family and I come out here sometimes just to watch a movie, just get out of the house. So um, that's the living room. It's uh, It really is cozy. You've got a dedicated living space and uh, Nobody's walking through it when they're doing other stuff. You go to the front door, the bathroom, the kitchen, that sort of thing. Nobody's walking through the living room. And that's something that I really, really like. Okay, let's talk kitchen. Here it is. Full-size kitchen, kind of. Uh, we've got a 33-inch sink, stainless. Uh, it's fairly deep. I think it's a 9-inch deep. Uh, and this one's interesting because it has kind of an accessory rail uh, into the top and you get a uh, cutting board. Uh, there's kind of a built-in drying rack in the bottom. And then there's also kind of a, a drying piece that goes on the top that I have stored in the cabinet over here. Uh, you notice I moved the dishes off the table here. Uh, call it a table, call it an island, um, but uh, not permanent. It folds. You just reach under, let it down. And now you can use that space for, you know, something else. So, uh, cabinets, Baltic birch, you guessed it. Uh, the cabinets are all solid 
three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. So this is not a veneer. There's no, you know, veneers on the edge. Solid three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood cabinets, and they are all bespoke. They are all built for these exact spots. This is not. There's nothing off the shelf here. On the end here, we've got a pullout that's kind of set up for a trash pullout. Um, under the sink, we've got doors, fire extinguisher, plumbing is under there. Um, the plumbing for this is inside the envelope of the tiny house. There is no plumbing in the walls, okay? So uh, that plumbing all is within the, the warm envelope inside the house. Uh, that's all we have for doors in the kitchen here. Then we get into drawers. Uh, we've got some uh, drawers here for our silverware. Um, the drawer system, let me tell you a little bit about that. This is uh, a modern European type drawer system. And these drawers are steel sides. So that is purchased and then this I make and then this is where the slide goes and then uh, the fronts which I made just att attach to this so you get a lot of volume in there you're not wasting a lot of volume with uh, with drawer slides and thick boxes made out of wood double fronts things like that they all have a felt on them uh, recessed uh, linear pull um, the drawer faces are adjustable um, just in case with um, weather and things like that, things get out, you, you can adjust them. So there are four drawers of that width, which I believe is 18 inches. And then you have two sets of drawers, which are more of a 30, 30 inch, 24 inch. Uh, so there's some pretty deep drawers there. And because of the cooktop, this one is false. There's still a pull, but that's it's not a drawer. And then more drawers over here. So quite a bit of drawers there. Um, three burner LP uh, stove. And you have a full, uh, full hood with fan and light. A couple shelves. Cooktop is uh, electronic ignition, three burners, uh, runs on LP. Uh, there is a vent hood. The vent hood does exit out. Um, countertop is uh, Formica. It's a Formica laminate, and it kind of kind of looks like slate. I think they called it uh, basalt, maybe, uh, but it's a dark gray. Uh, the countertop itself is, is uh, Baltic birch, and I've thickened the edge to give it some meat there. Um, but trying to keep weight down a little bit, so no stone, no solid surface. Um, trying to go for weight there. So, But uh, it, it's a nice laminate, nice and dark. Um, we've got uh, two shelves here, floating shelves. And um, I also built two more floating shelves that would fit right here, but I just wasn't 100% convinced that they belonged there, so I didn't install them, but they do come with it. You could put them wherever you'd like. If you wanted to put another shelf up there, you certainly could. Um, but uh, really, it's a pretty good-sized kitchen. Included spice rack here, and this actually hides the electric panel. When you pull this off, full electric panel right there. and uh, And light switches here for the kitchen lights. Once again, we've got some uh, LED puck lights. We've got four of them here in the kitchen. So it's really a pretty good, it's good working light here. And then of course, when you're out here, you get the, the lights from the, uh, from the chandelier. So the other side of the kitchen is, is really uh, which, what I would call the storage stairs. Here's your stairs to the main loft and we just packed as much uh, storage underneath as we could. So really what we came up with are a couple small drawers here. Um, shoes, the dog leashes, you know, you name it. Uh, but uh, these are fairly deep. They're the full depth of there. Uh, and then we've got two more reasonable sized drawers there. And then we have four uh, 
even larger drawers and a couple small ones there. And uh, this is a pantry. I'll show you from the other side too. A pull out vertical pantry. This is our main cooking appliance. Sometimes in these tiny houses, people put in an RV, an RV range, so an RV combination oven with stovetop. And I just can't stand those. Has anybody cooked on an RV range before? They're terrible. The oven has no capacity. They've got terrible heat regulation. They're just a mess. Nobody wants to cook on an RV oven. So I did not want a full size oven either because this isn't this isn't a gigantic tiny house. Some tiny houses are fine with a full size range. This one, it would have looked out of place, I believe. So, enter the Breville Smart Oven. I love this thing. I, I can't even tell you how much we use the Breville Smart Oven. Uh, this one's actually never been used, uh, but uh, I have one in my house. It's great. Uh, you can you can cook a uh, a full chicken in it. They say you can cook like a 14 pound turkey and, and I believe it. It is, it's electric, but um, it is not a puny countertop oven. It is a 1500 watt cooking appliance. I mean, it's on its own breaker because, you know, it takes a whole, a whole circuit's worth of power. Uh, multiple heating modes. Uh, it'll make toast, bagel, broil, bake, Warm, pizza, roast, proof, cookies, cookies, uh, slow cook, dehydrate, and air fry. It is an air fryer, so it has convection functions and um, comes with all the accessories. Now, uh, I have hidden the accessories kind of up here in this, uh, in this area above the oven. And uh, one reason was I had some extra height here. Number two, I wanted more air space. You know, ovens get hot. So, you know, if it draws air in through here, it can exhaust out through there. I didn't want to kind of overheat the, the area that it was in. Um, you can get this out. It's not fastened in. There are some blocks that locate the feet. Uh, so it's not gonna move around on you without, without a lot of fuss. And if you need to get it out, you kind of just lift it up and, and it will pull out and uh, you know you can unplug it clean behind it but then once it drops in it's in it, it doesn't move around if you if you shut it hard it's not going to push it back in the open so uh, we also have a almost full-size LG refrigerator it's apartment sized right uh, but it's not one of these tiny little things uh, it really has decent capacity. Um, it is, gosh, I can't remember how many cubic feet it is. 11.1 .1 cubic feet. So it's not a dormitory fridge, but it's not a giant house fridge either. A, a big house fridge might be 20 to 22 cubic feet. This is 11. Uh, it does have an ice maker in it, which is kind of cute. It's, it doesn't have water hooked up to it, but it's got these cute little ice trays you fill. And then once they freeze, you turn the little lever and it cracks them out into the little into the little tray. Uh, it is stainless steel finish, white interior. This has never been used, okay? This is brand new. This is brand new. Everything in the kitchen, brand new. Um, I guess now is as good a time as any to talk about the floor a little bit. The floor in here is a vinyl. You'd call it, I guess, a luxury vinyl tile. So it is about 20 by 20, so it's, it looks like a large format tile. Uh, and it's glued down on a, a Luan underlayment. So uh, the entire floor and the entire unit is that vinyl. Wipes up very easily. Obviously the house is small. It, uh, the whole thing just takes five minutes to, to fully clean with a Swiffer or something like that. Um, carpets are included. I've got a nice runner here. I've got a really soft, fuzzy uh, carpet that goes in the living room that's real nice to sink your toes into and we've got some in the bathroom so let's go check out the bathroom well when you were listening to me talk endlessly about the kitchen you probably noticed this door behind me or maybe you didn't notice it was a door 
It's a pocket door. One thing with tiny houses, uh, I mean, they're tiny. So having discernible separations of space, I think is something that's huge. That's one reason I love my little living room because it's its, its own space. It's not a, uh, you know, not a, not a walkthrough space or place to shove your boots or, uh, you know, hang your coats. It's, it's the living room. And every place has its own space. And so here's the bathroom. Uh, once again, Baltic birch over uh, foam core. So it's not super heavy. Um, the door has a latch. You can lock it from the inside. It's on a soft close. So once you get close, it'll, it'll, it'll hold it closed. Um, so inside is our bathroom. Well, out of all the things that are difficult to film, I think tiny house bathroom has got to be up there. As soon as you come in, you'll see we have a 36 inch fiberglass shower enclosure. It's got all black hardware and it has a glass tempered glass shower door. Inside the bathroom, once again, we have ceiling lights, LED. And then we also have, for face lighting, a lighted mirror. Call it a makeup light or task lighting. Uh, it's good to have light that's in front of you in a bathroom. The sink vanity uh, is set up for this vessel sink. So the sink vanity is a little lower, uh, but with the vessel sink, it's, it's almost perfect. And you can see we've got some cabinetry in there, three drawers, a door, and then we have a full-size wardrobe. So the bathroom is pretty good size, really, all things considered. We've got a 36-inch shower enclosure. We've got a full 30-inch toilet cubby here. So you're not like that when you're using the commode. Uh, same countertop, it's a Formica over Baltic Birch. Cabinetry, all Baltic Birch. We've got uh, three drawers here. Small one for the top. And then, of course, a door underneath the sink uh, with the sink plumbing. Once again, all of the plumbing is contained within the envelope. I can't tell you how important that is. Uh, it's not going to freeze when it's inside your envelope. If it's in the wall, it's going to freeze, period. So all of that is inside. Um, we've also got a full-size wardrobe here, shelf on the top, got a towel, a clothes bar, and shelf here and shelf down there. Um, also here in the, uh, the bath vanity, We've got an open shelf at the bottom so you can roll up your towels real fancy and shove them in there. Uh, another thing we've got in there is the, the fresh water shutoff for the whole house. There's a ball valve that you can reach back there and turn off all the fresh water supply to the whole house. Now behind me, we've got a uh, electric heater. This is a 1500 watt uh, digital control electric heater. I've got the breaker off to it now, but it has a digital display that shows your selected temperature. Now, the whole unit is heated and cooled with a high efficiency mini split uh, heat pump, but this is your backup heat. So if it gets so cold that the mini split cannot make enough heat, this is what's gonna save your bacon. All of our water in the whole tiny house is really contained in the bathroom. This wall over here, contains the, the feed coming in from underneath and distributes hot and cold water to the kitchen sink and here to the vanity sink. Then PEX pipes go up through the wall, sneak above the door frame, sneak behind the shower, but still inside the envelope, and go into this wall. And uh, the back side of this wall has our water heater and the plumbing for the toilet. So that is all within the envelope of the tiny house. So even if the mini split were to fail, this is gonna keep more than enough heat in the bathroom to keep all of your plumbing functional. Let's, let's see this plumbing. Now I know the tiny house aficionados are gonna freak out, 
but this tiny house has a conventional porcelain flush toilet. There's no incinerating toilet here. But if you absolutely have to have your poop burned to a crisp, you could put an incinerating toilet in here. You would remove the flush toilet. There's power right here. And this is an outside wall, so you could always put your vent in if you have a fetish with burning up your own poop. I, however, do not. So this is the wall I was talking about that's got the re all the rest of the water in. Toilet supply is coming out of this wall, not coming out of this wall. And all of the, the plumbing for the water heater is in here as well. So once again, all of your fresh water is contained within the envelope of the tiny house. Uh, this is an EcoTemp LP direct fire uh, tankless water heater. Way more than enough hot water to do whatever you need to do. Uh, now one thing, talking about tiny house aficionados, there is no hookup for laundry in this tiny house. This tiny house was not built as a 24-7. Built as a 24 I built it kind of more with the design goal of being a weekender. So uh, my choices were more geared towards a weekender. So, you know, I told you at the beginning we were going to talk a little bit better about design choices. So uh, if this was going to be a 365 tiny house, you may need some laundry facilities. Um, and, uh, you know, that could probably be done. But that's not how it was designed. So that's the answer to that question. So uh, this will supply more than enough hot water for, um, you know, as many showers as, as you can afford uh, LP gas. Uh, just out of shot here is a Panasonic uh, Whisper Quiet uh, vent fan. So, uh, you know, a tiny house, it's very important to be able to get humidity out. So when you're pouring the humidity in when you're using the shower, um, you run the fan and get that out of here. So because the walls are wood, you really do have to be a little bit careful about, about how you treat, how you treat it. Um, you probably would not, for instance, want to leave this tiny house for six months with no climate control in it. Uh, you know, humidity could get out of control and you could, you could have a few performance issues with the panels. It, it is a high performance plywood, but uh, you don't want it to be 95% humidity in here for six months during the summer. You need to keep that uh, mini split running and keep the, keep the humidity and temperature uh, within a reasonable level. Mini split, you say? What is this mini split? Well, this is the interior unit, the, the evaporator unit, I guess you'd say, for our LG uh, mini split. So this is LG's highest line mini split and uh, it's 9,000 BTUs. It's 23 and a half sear, which is the efficiency. And it's their design they call art. It's the art series and it's, it's a mirror. So you can kind of see the reflection of the chandelier there. Uh, and I've got it right in the middle of the house. So, uh, you know, sometimes I see where people will put them way back in the corner of a loft or something like that. You got one loft that's got a, you know, temperature <laughs> a tornado in it, and the other one is getting nothing. So this one is right in the middle of the unit. So one thing you notice none of is piping. All of the piping for this is contained in the wall structure, all the refrigerant piping, uh, and also the condensate drain and the wiring. So. There is no drain coming out the sidewall there. It all goes down and actually drains into the wheel well uh, in front of one of the tires. So uh, 9,000 BTUs, that's three quarters of a ton, and it is well enough, uh, way more than it is needed to cool this. Um, it has the um, infrared remote control, uh, and then it also uh, has Wi-Fi built in. So you can control this with the LG SmartThin app. Uh, as long as you've got Wi-Fi, you can control this from, from anywhere, which is nice if you're uh, you know not there all the time. You can uh, kind of make sure the temperature's staying in check. Uh, let's talk a little bit about heat. So this is a mini split heat pump, which means um, you know not only does it provide your air conditioning, uh, but uh, it provides your heat. So uh, even when it's cold out, there's heat outside. And so, 
it essentially is running like an air conditioner, but in reverse. And so it moves heat from outside, even when it's cold, to the inside. And uh, the efficiency of this unit is about four to one in heating. So if it takes 500 watts to run this unit, it'll bring 2000 watts of heat into, into the house. So uh, it really works well and it's, it's quiet. Um, this also has a mode, a dehumidification mode. And um, a lot of times with these tiny houses, even with a small mini split like this, this is, you know, is 9,000 BTUs, pretty much the smallest you can get. You have a problem because it's almost too much air conditioning in the summer. And you don't really want it cold inside. You want to get the humidity out to control the humidity. This has a mode, uh, dehumidification mode, that essentially runs the mini split as low and as slow as it can go, okay? And it's not trying to hit a temperature set point. You don't get to control anything. You just say defrost, or excuse me, dehumidify. And so you put it in the dehumidification mode and it internally is trying to hit a humidity target, which I believe is about 55%. And uh, since it's running at very low and slow, it, it uh, gets a lot of moisture out, but it doesn't make it super cold. If you just put it on 68 or 66 or something like that, it runs uh, and gets to that temperature just like that and then shuts off. I, I, I gave you the temperature you want. What more do you want from me? So you don't get much moisture out and it ends up feeling cold and clammy. So dehumidification mode that's my pro tip that's what I run it on in the summer it's not even on air conditioning mode in the summer dehumidification mode so let's talk a little more about heat pump and heating the unit with this LG mini split this one is a high uh, a high output low ambient temperature heat pump so what that means is in heating it can go to a lower outside temperature before it runs out of efficiency and the ability to bring heat in. Some mini splits will only let you go down to about 10 degrees. And after that, they can't really give you any more heat because they're just out of their efficiency. They're not able to bring that heat from the outside inside. This one has low ambient heating. I believe it's rated down to negative five degrees. It will still make useful heat to negative five. So another another feature on this uh, LG Mini Split is that it's it's very very efficient. Uh, efficiency is rated in sear. This is 23 and a half sear. To put that in perspective, most uh, home air conditioners are anywhere from maybe 13 to 17 sear. This is 23 and a half. Uh, they they get there by uh, being able, they control the speed of all the fan motors and the compressor, and it does two things for you. It makes it very quiet. I mean, this this is running right now, and you really can't hear it. Same thing with the unit outside. It doesn't kick on and make big fan noise and shake the unit. Uh, you really can't tell it's on. Uh, but uh, it, they also able to make it very efficient because of that. And so um, for heating, that 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 makes it uh, very advantageous because they're able to bring lots of heat in um, with the heat pump because it's it's so efficient. Uh, this unit is also what you would call overbalanced, I guess, towards heating. So it's 9,000 BTUs of cooling, but it's 10,500 BTUs of heating. A lot of times these will make They'll, they'll be able to better performance in cooling than heating, but this one's the opposite. They've, they've really designed it towards that low ambient heating. So uh, because the tiny house is fully heated and cooled with just that, that's, that's really a good thing. Now we did talk about the bathroom. We've got that 1500 watt heater. I kind of call that the emergency heater, the backup heat, or, um, you know, there is a door there. So you know, if it's a cold day and you're going to go in and take a shower or something uh, and you're going to close the door and close yourself off from, you know, the air and the rest of the unit and you're going to run the fan, maybe you kick that on to knock the chill off while you're in the bathroom. Now, another thing that I did, um, if this tiny house goes somewhere really cold, you know, um, I also pre-wired in the living room for a heater. So kind of underneath the television, I have 
made a, a, an opening and, and there's insulation in there uh, and pre-wired for a second heater on its own dedicated circuit. So if you really found that, you know, hey, you know, 1500 watts of backup heat is great, but 3000 would be better, you can put that same heater that I have in the bathroom uh, up here, kind of, um, kind of right there underneath the television. Uh, it's already pre-wired for that. I don't think it'll be needed, so that's why I didn't cut it into the beautiful paneling. But um, but I did put it there. So um, as long as we're talking about mechanicals, one thing I did not do is I did not put a ceiling fan in there. Um, I didn't want a ceiling fan. I don't like ceiling fans in tiny houses, um, especially being so tall. You're going up the stairs and you whack your head, you know. So um, instead, I put this awesome chandelier in. So I wanted that more than a ceiling fan. Uh, and the cool thing with this chandelier is this uh, front window up here, this clear story window uh, from outside at night, you can see through, you can see the chandelier. It looks really cool. So um, I didn't really think we needed a ceiling fan. We've got the mini split right at the central location. It's near the ceiling. Um, and so what I do is if I feel like I need some air circulation, I've got a, a portable, a small portable fan, about an eight inch, and I just put it in the loft with me. And then I use that to kind of churn the air into the loft. So and I think that really works instead of having the ceiling fan. Because when you go up the stairs to the loft, you get kind of close to a ceiling fan. So uh, do you want to see the loft? Let's go check it out. So to access the main loft, you go up the storage stairs. And you'll notice this step right here is a little different. This is what I call a double rise, double run stair. So essentially, we've got one stair here that's missing. And this does make it legal through the IBC for ceiling height. Because as you come up here, you don't have to go up one more stair because they know when you get here, you're just gonna turn around and sit on your butt anyway, which is exactly how you get up here. So in the main loft, we've got this kind of little railing here. So it was important to me to separate this space from out there. And, uh, you know, also you don't want somebody rolling off. So uh, there's a nice little wall here and um, plenty of room on this side of the bed here. We've got another fuzzy rug. And uh, this is kind of where I see you'd maybe have some little storage units for clothes and whatnot. Um, We've got plenty of outlets up here. We've got two outlets on that wall. This one here is a USB outlet. And then there's also an outlet right here next to the bed. Uh, we've got these light fixtures here. And these are custom made to essentially look like the chandelier. There's a window over there. And a window right here. And these all have the cellular blinds. Um, and this is a king-sized mattress. And what you see here comes comes with it. The pillows, uh, the Egyptian cotton sheets, this uh, nice fuzzy comforter, uh, and the mattress itself, which is a king-size, kind of a semi-firm foam mattress in a bag. Now, over there, you've still got about another 10 inches that the mattress could go to the wall. I don't, I don't usually do that, though, because it gets into the window shade. But if you really wanted more room up here, you could certainly do that. You could push that over. Uh, and there's some room there at the bottom, too, where you can store things. Um, because, uh, you know, obviously for headroom, we wanted the mattress this way, about as far as we could go here. So, um, but uh, very, very comfortable up here. These lights on, up there are on a dimmer. Uh, the chandelier is on a dimmer as well. Um, and uh, you really just have a nice view here of your gorgeous Haiga tiny home. So over there we have the secondary loft and uh, there's our ladder, but let me show you how that all works. So the secondary loft is accessed through this uh, ladder. Ladder solid, solid birch. Uh, and this is the stowed position, I guess you'd say. I kind of think it's cool over here because it really gives you that, that separation I've been talking about. This is the living room, this is the kitchen, 
area. So, uh, you know, with it over here, um, it really makes that, that two space. Um, but you really can't climb it there. Uh, there's not much ceiling room there. So, here's what you do to move it. Lift up gently, slide it into place, and then pull the leg out. Now once it's over here, it will just sit in the right place. It's got uh, felt pads on the bottom and uh, it'll never get in the way of the door because it will always go back to that, that fixed position. Uh, it will also not run into the television because there's a stop up there. So they're uh, essentially you call this like a library ladder, I guess, but I don't like library ladders having all this exposed hardware and pipes and things like that. So in here, all the sliding hardware is hidden behind this, this panel here. And the, the features of the ladder that engage to the slider go through this little track here. So just kind of one of those cool things. And so then from here, you can access the secondary or sleeping loft. So the secondary loft is a little bit smaller than the primary, but it still fits a queen-sized mattress. And then we still have this kind of half-height wall here, and so the babies don't fall out. So with a queen-sized mattress in here, uh, you will have, if you put it up near the wall, you'll have six to eight inches here, uh, which is perfect for babies to fall into instead of over. Um, once again, a full Baltic birch treatment. You can really see that negative space detail here uh, and how that gets treated at the ceiling. It just kind of dies into the ceiling. Um, the ceiling here, we didn't talk about that before, is a, uh, a pine uh, shiplap. It's painted white. Um, once again, we've got the same two Marvin windows. We've got a crank out and a crank out. Uh, with the cellular blinds and uh, we've got the light switch here for our custom uh, sconce fixtures. Uh, we've got a duplex outlet there. We've got a duplex outlet here with built-in USB charger. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive tour of my tiny house. I, uh, I hope I've conveyed to you uh, some of my design choices that I made on this and uh, really been able to give you a, a, an indication of the quality construction that, uh, that's gone into this. Um, nothing but premium materials here. Uh, I mean, it really reads like a laundry list of what you'd want on a full-size house. LP, smart side, um, Kumaru accent siding on the outside, um, Kynar coated, uh, steel architectural snap lock standing seam um, you know good attention to details with uh, with waterproofing um, head flashings on every window um, the exterior sheathing is Huber zip system with uh, with flashing tape and the uh, uh, the flashing goop where where needed uh, and um, lots of little sheet metal sheet metal details over over things that needed uh, you know, needed some flashing. So um, I have never had any leak or any indication of a leak. Um, so those details are absolutely rock solid. Uh, the same can be said for the interior as far as the fit and finish of the plywood walls. Um, I mean, every single one of these panels has been hand fit, cut, sanded, sealed, sanded, finished, sanded, finished, <laughs> installed, <laughs> touched up. So uh, literally hundreds of hours <laughs> into these plywood walls, but they're gorgeous and that's what I wanted. So uh, really going for that Scandi style. Um, get the fur on the couch, very high. Um, so it's very, very comfortable to just come and crawl into the couch and throw a fur over yourself in front of the, the crackling fire, uh, which is hilarious, by the way. 
but uh, top quality materials, um, you know, LG fridge. Um, so I've really uh, tried to do everything that I would want in a tiny house. Uh, so why don't I want to keep the tiny house? Well, I want to build something else. For me, the joy is in the building. Um, so I got to keep uh, got to keep these hands busy. So uh, next up, I'm going to build a little cabin. I think so. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to the tiny house and send it uh, down the road to someone who can really use it and enjoy it. Uh, I really see this going to someone who is maybe a weekender that wants a luxury luxury weekender, uh, or if you want to say an instant cabin. Let's say you've got some land and uh, you want to get on that land now. This would be perfect for that. Uh, you can put it in place, um, put it up on some semi-permanent blocking, uh, and uh, maybe some skirting around it, and you'd have a very nice instant cabin. Uh, so I have priced this at, uh, at a price that I think reflects the quality of materials that go into it and the craftsmanship. Uh, it is certainly not going to be the least expensive tiny house on wheels, and uh, nor should it be. Um, so uh, if you're the kind of person that uh, enjoys this this look and this uh, and can appreciate this quality, this may be the tiny house for you. Uh, and if you're looking for uh, something that's maybe more um, entry level, this may not be the right the right tiny house for you. But uh, but thank you anyway for watching, and um, I hope uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. So we'll see you next time.